When this happened to me, I was so young that I actually don't remember all of it, but I have heard all of it secondhand so many times that I know the story. The last time it happened with this particular ghost is actually my earliest memory. So when I was little, the very first house I lived in as a baby was this old 18th century townhouse that my parents rented from the local doctor. Suffice it to say, that place was super haunted. It's a story for another day, but three years ago, they finally sealed the upper floors off entirely, and the doctor told my mom that nobody will ever set foot up there again. The bottom floor is now the GP office and waiting room. All of this aside, growing up in that environment left me with a major sensitivity to spirits that is kind of still active sometimes, even though I'm 25 now. But when I was a kid, I terrified my entire extended family with the things that I would come out and say at random. Anyway, one of the more popular stories that my parents like to tell at barbecues and parties and really to anybody who will listen, happened when I was two and my mom wanted to pop in to visit her grandfather's grave. Her family is from a village about a 20 minutes drive away, and there are two graveyards, the new one and the old one. My grandfather is buried in the old one in the old family plot. This graveyard has since been locked and you have to get a key from the priest to get in. So being two, I wasn't overly interested in sitting down by a graveside to pray with my parents and they were happy enough to let me wander so long as I stayed in their sight, and luckily for them, I didn't go far. I bolted down the path and stopped, about halfway back among the tombstones, where I started to sort of sway on the spot and dance as much as a two-year-old is capable of. My parents watched me for a few minutes, but didn't think much of it, and then told me that we were leaving. My dad picked me up and we headed for the gate, but just before we left, I turned over his shoulder, looked around, and smiled and waved at something. They obviously didn't really think it was anything to be concerned about, because a week later they went back. My grandfather had died the day before their wedding four years earlier, and mom had been very close to him, so they visited fairly often. This time, when we went in, I didn't even wait for permission and ran back down to the same graveside where I began swaying on the spot again, looking up over the grave in the air as if something was suspended there. It's probably worth describing the grave, but there really isn't much to describe. It was a very small patch of earth that didn't even have a border fairly overgrown, and with a totally rusted small iron cross at the head of it. There was no nameplate, no indication of who was buried there, and it clearly wasn't a recent grave. Keep in mind, literally nobody is buried in this cemetery anymore, except a couple more of my family members who went into the family plot. At this point, my parents are creeped out. My dad, who swears blind that he doesn't believe in ghosts and never will, came down to ask me what I was doing. I explained that I was dancing. He asked me why, and I pointed above the iron cross and, in the jumbled English of a toddler, said, The boy is singing and he wants me to dance. My dad picked me up, ran past my mother, and got into the car to wait for mom. They went to my great-grandmother's house across the street and told her the whole story, but they all agreed it sounded a bit more ridiculous the more they thought about it, and since I was only two, it was probably just me playing a game with myself to keep myself entertained. So they went back. They entered through different gates. They went over the wall. No matter what they did to try to confuse two-year-old me, I always went back to the same grave. And once again, there was nothing special about it. It wasn't beautiful or impressive. There was no reason for a two-year-old to be so drawn to this little patch of earth. But I always went straight there. I always danced while he sang to me, and I always waved to him before I left, 
regardless of which side we left from or which winding pathway they took out of there. They brought other family members with them as witnesses. They had family friends question me about it, and I always told the same story. My earliest memory is of my grandmother sitting me down on the cemetery wall while I was trying to dance as instructed, while my parents looked at me, totally scared, and asked me to describe him or tell her what his name was. I don't think I answered her, but I remember finding the looks on their faces just so unbelievably funny because they were so afraid of my friend, who only wanted to sing to me. What I didn't know was that my great-grandmother had told the priest, brought him in there to show him the grave, and asked if there was any way to know who was buried in the little unmarked plot. He went off and checked the burial records, and, sure enough, Five-year-old Robert, the blacksmith's son, had died of tuberculosis nearly a century earlier and lay there, marked only by the little iron cross that his father had made for him. Funny enough, my great-grandmother knew the blacksmith. He was their next-door neighbor, but he was an old man when she was a little girl, so she never knew the boy. My parents stopped bringing me to see my friend after that, we only went into the cemetery for funerals. We also moved out of the doctor's house, but it was a few years before I stopped being a creepy little kid that terrified anybody that spoke to me. I actually did go back a couple of years ago, and I brought a friend of mine visiting Europe from Boston. She told me when we met that she could speak to ghosts, and after a couple of weeks, I started divulging the hundreds of stories I have from childhood. She asked if she could come to the cemetery with me. Since the gate was locked, we had to hop the wall, but once we were inside, she pointed clean across the top of the headstones and said, Hey, is it that one over there? Pointing at its location. I nodded and she started walking toward it and stopped right at the iron cross. It's this one, right? I nodded. I swear this is totally real. She stood there for a second, and then she started backing away. I didn't have to ask her why. It was in the middle of December, and yet the air seemed to fizzle and get really hot. The hair on the back of my neck stood on end, and the pressure that built up in my head made it feel like my scalp would split open. She told me she wanted to leave, but I was already running out of there at that point, and we vaulted the wall like Olympians. I don't know what happened that day, since I'm not a child anymore and didn't really see anything, but I couldn't shake the feeling afterward that my little friend there felt like I had brought her with me so that I could impress her, and that he didn't like that. Not at all. When I was 17, I'm 24 now, I visited a cemetery at night with a small group of friends. We were just going to look at the graves, give a little love to the graves that looked like maybe nobody visited them anymore because they were from so long ago, and things like that. We were not going there to hurt anything, or mess around, or be disrespectful, because we were, and most of us still are, very spiritual. I had always liked cemeteries, and I feel a kind of peace when I'm in one, so I was very comfortable and relaxed there. I think that may be why what happened happened at all. I was following near the back of the group, lingering on some graves to read what was written, when everything just goes blank for me. The rest of what happens is what my friends told me about hours later. Hey, 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 this one's mine. I called to the next nearest people in the group. He turned around to laugh and tell me to quit playing around when he stopped. I shouldn't have died. Really, it wasn't my fault. Wh what do you mean? He asked, getting my other friends to stop and walk back to me. Well, you see, I was playing in the barn with the kittens and the man came in with a gun and bang. I don't think they would have believed that I wasn't the one speaking 
if the voice coming out of me hadn't been so much higher pitched and had a very, very country accent. I don't know why he did it, he was my daddy's best friend. For the next two hours, I led them around the cemetery, pointing out graves and telling them about the people buried there like I knew them. One of my friends had her phone out to use as a flashlight. She recorded everything I was saying so that they could fact check when we went back to the house that we were staying at. Eventually, I stopped again, frowning at a headstone. This one's my brother. He got to live a long, long time. It's not fair. I wanted to live too, I said, stomping my foot just before collapsing on the ground. I didn't wake up until we got home that night, and I remember that I had the worst headache of my entire life. My friends showed me the video, and then we all looked up as much as we could on the internet to see if I had been right. The grave that I had collapsed on top of had not been the brother of the girl who had supposedly possessed me. He had been the son of her father's best friend. The same best friend who she said shot her. I've never been back to that cemetery since. I'm afraid that the little girl won't be the one to possess me next time. Unfortunately, my friend's phone is the one that had the video, and she doesn't have that phone anymore. We didn't really think to save it after we did our fact check. You can believe whatever you want, but everything that I told you is the truth. I've never been back to that cemetery since. I'm afraid that the next time, the little girl won't be the one to possess me. I am of Japanese descent, and each year I go visit my family in the north of Japan. I also do the Obon, which is basically like the Japanese version of Dia de los Muertes, when all of the spirits of the dead come visit the land of the living. During this period, I decided to go visit Kyoto. After walking for a while out of the city, I began climbing a nearby mountain to discover a substantially sized cemetery. Being a young lad of 16 at the time, I decided that I would go exploring and see which families are interred here. It was about 3 p.m. and it was scorching. The trees here and there in the cemetery bore a welcome shade for me to cool down a little. After about 10 minutes or so of looking around the very old stone slabs, I realized a few odd details. First, it seems I somehow got lost in the cemetery. Mind you, I have an excellent sense of geolocation and I've found my way out of many a forest, mountains, crowded airports, and such. The cemetery itself was lower in its middle part, and surrounded by woods, so I think it was in the lower part because the horizon was only tombstones. Second, it was getting dark. As I said before, it was around 3 p.m., so that was very odd and the surroundings had that yellowish tinge you get at dusk. To make a small cultural parenthetical remark here, dusk in Old Japanese is called Tasogare Doki, and it's supposed to be the in-between moment when strange things occur. Not a good time to be surrounded by tombs. Third, I was getting a little cold. Not like I was plunged in an icy pool, but more like when you're in the middle of the mountains and you can feel some coldness through the gaps of your coat. After that, I began to see some weird shadows or something out of the corner of my eye. Very weird, because I wasn't feeling panicked or anything yet. I could calmly observe them. It was moving like these old lava lamps, very deliberately, and sometimes looked a bit human-shaped, or like huge faces. I was walking toward it because I thought that if it could harm me physically, I could certainly punch it, right? But it was like a mirage, like it was fluttering. After a while, I started to feel like I was in real danger. I was getting colder and colder, 
and at this moment I saw a monk who was very surprised to see me there, because the cemetery was supposed to be closed at this hour. He brought me back to the entrance, and I told him that it was open when I got there. He informed me that he was next to it all day, and he never saw me pass by. I assumed that he thought I went in by a fraction, so I told him everything that I saw and felt. He seemed very surprised at first, and then he told me to look at the hour. It was 6.10 p.m. That means I was in there for over three hours. He then told me that I shouldn't come here while the sun is setting, because I could have been taken away by the kamikakoushi. Anyway, that was my very weird experience there. The cemetery was east of Kyoto, near the Shogunzuka mountain. I'd be interested to know if anybody else has had strange experiences there. I live near Mount Hope Cemetery. It's the very same one that Stephen King mentions in his books and the one that he cameos in in Pet Cemetery. Day and night, Mount Hope Cemetery is always unsettling. Every time I pass by it, I always feel like I'm being watched. Most of the time, it's an easy feeling to brush off, but there are three instances where I've been shook to the core. First, I was in the fourth grade. My whole class went on a field trip to the cemetery. From the very beginning when it was brought up, I expressed my lack of interest in going, but I was the only one not showing enthusiasm, so I knew then it was going to happen. I dreaded it, hoping that my teacher would decide to cancel the trip. I wasn't allowed to skip school as a kid, so I never even asked. I went to the cemetery with my class, and they were all having a wonderful time. I was immersed in vibes that were making me sick to my stomach. We were told to make rubbings on paper with crayon, of at least three gravestones that caught our eye. I didn't want to, but I did anyway. While I'm rubbing these gravestones, I felt like I was stepping on the toes of someone, and that I was bothering someone. I managed to rub two, the third I picked. My crayon was still in my left hand. I grabbed a piece of paper from the pile near me, but when I knelt down to begin rubbing it, I had an overwhelming feeling of anger wash over me. I stopped dead. For a second, I couldn't move. That gravestone didn't want to be rubbed. I tried to talk myself into reason. It's a 117-year-old rotted corpse. It can't possibly do anything. But to no avail. I could have forced myself to rub this one but I thought that that wasn't best. I didn't rub a third one. I just couldn't get myself to do it. It freaked me out. I said it out loud to nobody in particular. There's something wrong with this grave. It doesn't... I stopped talking. I wasn't really comfortable talking about the experience to anyone around me. I knew that they wouldn't have believed me anyway. I know what I felt, and it wasn't peaceful. If I had rubbed that grave, someone, or something, would have attached itself to me, and it would have been nearly impossible to shake off. It was in the summer of 2012. I biked home from work. I worked at Wendy's. The cemetery was on my right. I looked because I saw somebody. I thought it was just a dumb teenager doing something stupid, but it wasn't. I saw two shadows watching me one looming over a grave. It had long, creepy fingers and a thick, dark, malevolent energy that seemed so bent on anger and misery that it must have been an entity of pure evil. The other was a man, a shadow standing right next to it. It was standing next to a thick tree. His top hat brim remained straight, even though as close as he was to that tree, the tree would have bent the brim he must have been seven feet tall. The looming one lunged toward me. I yelled an expletive, 
completely sure that I was about to get possessed. The akimbo one flinched, and then they were both gone. I was still myself and relieved, heart pounding, but I was okay. The third. I was biking home again through Mount Hope Avenue. I almost got through the cemetery without seeing anything. Then, suddenly, two lights caught my attention. They were moving crazy fast. One was chasing the other. They crossed the road in front of me. The one lagging behind suddenly pounced. They let go. They both darted past the road and onto the other side. The moment they began getting smaller, they were gone. Of course, there are times when I can't avoid going past Mount Hope Cemetery. I have sensed other spirits and the like. I just completely downright refuse to acknowledge them. There's definitely something sinister about the cemetery, and part of me feels like there might be something that wants to latch on to me there. A few years ago, this girl that I liked and I went out one night. We were having a really fun time just goofing around. We bought some snacks and drinks and just wanted to find a spot to sit. It was kind of romantic because it was quiet and it was quite chilly out. We didn't pay much attention to that, as though each other's company was helping us keep warm enough, you know? Anyway, we see a cemetery and although it's already past closing time, the front gate is open. We decided to go inside as it was a place that we could have some privacy. We walk through the cemetery for a minute or so, and we see a bench to sit at. It's right by another gate, but that one was locked. We sit and talk and laugh, and then something pretty off-putting happens. On the other side of the cemetery, I see a white, almost transparent something rush by, disappearing behind a mausoleum. I told her about it, and she looked back as she had her back turned to that direction. We waited and the cold began to kick in a little. She told me that she didn't doubt it. We were probably disturbing the dead, and there was probably a reason for the closing time other than routine maintenance. After that, we tried to exit the cemetery through the way that we had gotten in, but it was already locked. We were a little bit worried, but we were also kind of enjoying ourselves, as the situation was harmless. We didn't see anything after that, and just climbed over the gate next to the bench. This experience, not being the most clear one, only added to my already existing belief of the world that we choose to look away from every day.